but as much as I insisted I would have no part in her scheme, Vera was taking it for granted I would. Neither of us had our minds in the cards as we played that night. I knew we were just killing time between newspaper editions. This was a death watch for Vera. Maybe it was for me, too. Don't you realize if I'm caught, they'll want to know where I got the car, and then they'll ask questions, and they'll have me on a murder charge. If you're smart, you won't get caught. And if I'm caught, don't you realize you'll be out, too? 18 points. That gives me 30. How will I be caught? You'll be out the 1850 bucks we would have gotten on the car. Really, Vera, you would be an idiot to throw it all away. Just let me sell the bus tomorrow, with the money it'll bring, and what you've already got. A clever kid like you can run it up in no time. Then, then we'll both be in the clear. I'll be in the clear anyway. Maybe. But if I got caught, I'd be good and sore at you. You mean you'd squeal? No, not, not squeal exactly. Never mind what you meant. Even if you did tell the cops I was in on it with you, what could they do to me? Probably give me the same medicine they gave you. Yeah. A rope. But I'm on the way out anyway. All they'll be doing is rushing it. All right, but think of the 1850 you'd lose. You'd kick yourself along the block if you let that get away from you. I'll take the chance. Want another drink? You're being a goon. That's how people wind up behind the eight ball. They get some money, and then they go, and they become greedy, and they want some more. My, my. Caesar. Who? You know, the Roman general. You got his for being greedy wasn't satisfied, so the final wind-up was he took the count. A couple of days ago you didn't have a dime. Why, you were so broke you couldn't pay cash for a postage stamp. Now you almost have $700 and 1850 more coming. Take my advice. Don't try for more. I'm tired of this game. Let's have some blackjack. Play solitaire. Okay, I will. That's how you feel about it. Getting sore and throwing things around won't help you much, Roberts. I'm really doing you a favor. I helped you out by keeping my mouth shut when you were in the jam. I showed you how to make some soft money. This is the thanks I get? Thanks? Sure. Or would you rather I call the cops and tell them how you killed a man and stole his money? I didn't kill anybody! Yes, you did. You know I didn't. Alright then. Suppose I call the cops. If you're innocent, what do you have to be scared of? Go ahead. Go ahead and call them and see if I care. At least they'll give me a square deal. You want me to call them? You heard me. But I'm warning you, if I'm pinched, I'll swear you were in on it. I'll say that you help me. If I fry, I'll get even with you. You wouldn't dare, you coward. Yeah? Then try it and see. Call him. Yeah. Okay? I will. Hello? Information? I like the number for the Hollywood police station. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Now wait a minute, Barry. You wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? I'll show you if I wouldn't. Take, take a minute. Let's talk this over. This was early in the evening, and the conversation, while hectic, was at least pitched low. But as the minutes passed and more obstacles to her plan popped into my head, the air got blue. Each word coming from our lips cracked like a whip. I reminded her that as Charles Haskell, I didn't even know my mother's name, where I'd gone to school, the name of my best friend, whether I had an Aunt Emma or not, my religion, and if I'd ever owned a dog. I didn't even know what my middle initial stood for. I also pointed out that the real Haskell had a scar on his forearm. His people never saw the scar. He told me he ran away after putting out the kid's eye. Yeah, but his father knew he was cut. There'd be some kind of mark. Uh, so what? His real man's dead, or soon will be dead anyway, by tomorrow morning's papers. Just cut yourself a little. But for that kind of money, I'd let you cut off my leg. You're drunk and crazy mad, Vera. Turn me in, but I wouldn't get mixed up in this. Besides, how do we know? Haskell was such a phony. Maybe he wasn't the man's son at all. He just dreamed it all up. Dreaming or not dreaming, you're not going to be dreaming when the law taps you on the shoulder. I hear there's a nice little gas chamber waiting for you. Extradition there is always a cinch. Where's that phone? Vera! Vera! Leave me alone! Vera! Leave me alone! I wrote a phone! God, the police! Leave me alone! I hate you, you little shit! I'll let you go when you promise to leave the phone where it is. Right. You don't know what you're doing. You're drunk. You're hurting me! Do you promise? I promise you're hurting me. All right. All right. It is hot in here. Go open a window. It's not hot. Yes, it is. Now do I do it or do you do it? You're no gentleman, see? All right. I'll 
go open a window. Vera! Vera! <laughs>